Welcome back, everyone. It's our final segment this morning, uh, talking about the controversial gas compression station that's being discussed to be put into uh, some 26 acres in North Davidson County. Uh, Whites Creek Pike, right between Greenbrier and Morgan Roads. With us this morning is Bill Robertson, Concerned Citizens for a Safe Environment, clearly by the title of his group. He's against it. Uh, we did invite a representative from Tennessee Gas Pipeline Company, um, declined to come on this morning. Um, but uh, we should say that uh, they'll probably be watching very closely tonight. I want to, in our final segment, let folks know what the public can do, what you're doing mobilizing, whether you're for or against it, and obviously you're against it. Uh, you expect um, a big crowd at the hearing tonight? Yes, I think there's going to be a lot of people, and we'd like, if you you know, support our cause. We'd like you to call your uh, councilman, councilwoman um, for Metro Council tonight to say that uh, you want them to vote and we want you to get them to vote in favor of Linnell Matthews um, ordinance. Um, we think it's really important. Uh, and it's, you might think, well, this is a Jolton thing. This is up in the mm -hmm. that, that part. Um, we have word already that there's another gas company looking to locate uh, a compressor station somewhere else in the county. Uh, they're looking for land to buy. So this may come to your backyard, too. That's what I was wondering. I mean, or anywhere else throughout the mid-state. But I mean, yeah, um, we're hearing uh, two, maybe even more looking at it right now. I think there, there's a move to change the way they do things and to build bigger compressor stations further apart. And so... I think more communities are going to come and up Tennessee with this fight. And Tennessee is more ripe for this because of the lines that the are lines, already here? The lines that go through. The lines, yeah, as I said, the, the gas, the, 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 you, there's, you can look on, um, there's actually a mapping system, but there's a huge number of, of I was uh, say, pipelines. Comparatively that, speaking, compared to neighboring states, I don't know. I know you're not an expert on this, but maybe you've seen the maps. Does Tennessee just for some reason have more because of the proximity or because we've been easier to deal with, perhaps, when no, it comes I think to it's, environmental it's, issues? It's geographical. The geographical. In, in the early okay, days, it was, it was actually the the very first pipelines were put through during the Second World War to take gas from Louisiana up to uh, the Appalachians to uh, for for indus industrial use. Okay. And so that was the the first pipeline. And Tennessee is just on the way. So you know it's it's yeah. geographical. And and so now you know it's uh, the the pipelines are there and they want to to use them to, to transport gas. In this case, they're going the other direction mm -hmm. um, from the shale gas in West Virginia down to to the Gulf Coast. But um, the yeah. pipelines were there. The pipelines are old. They're 50 years old. And again, as I said, that's part of the worry, of course, that the the segment you had at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, that old pipelines. And now they're increasing the pressure? Uh, or the average pressure will increase because, you know, I, they, I think one of the funny parts was I wasn't dealing with, I, I have never talked to anybody from Kinder Morgan or Tennessee Gas Pipeline about this issue because they have not been, they didn't want to come on the show, they, mm -hmm. they haven't wanted to talk to our group, they haven't wanted to do a public answer session. Their lawyer but will be there tonight, you think? I presume their lawyer will be there, but they've never had technical people to answer our questions on any of this. So we've just done our homework, read their filings, mm -hmm. um, but one of them, two of the people from our group, very early on got taken down to a compressor station in Lobeville to say this is what one looks like. Well, it was a very small Who one. Who took you there? The, the, somebody from Kinder Morgan. I was not there. Okay, it was so they, uh, Laurie Burkhead and I think... They, uh, they heard about the objections and they invited a and couple they, of people. And they invited to two, two people from our group down to show them what, what a compressor station would look like. Okay, And they were really trying to head off any protests. They were trying to, 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 uh, to get this whole thing to die. This was very early on in the process, much before I got involved. But they said, oh no, the gas pressure is not going to be increased. But that's not really true. They're not going to increase it above the, you know, the, the, there's a certain maximum pressure that the pipeline will take. They're not going to be increasing it above that. But the average pressure, if you're moving more gas, the average pressure in the pipeline definitely goes up. There's okay. just no... They can't deny that. What, what, what was it like the tour? What did uh, Lori tell you? I, she told me that. Um, okay, it was a much smaller facility. It had three compressors, but they were all much did they, smaller. Did they ask them to drive down there and meet them? Or I don't know. I, Lori just told me the story and that she, she went down. She, she and they went were invited down. to go take a look. She and, and I think uh, Gary Moore, one of the other people in our group, did it answer any of their questions to their satisfaction? Not at that really. Point, or um, did it raise the, more questions? They, it sort of raised more questions because they said, "Is this?" similar to what our station would be. They said, yeah, it's similar. And they said, but this is how many horsepower, and this was, I forget, you know, yeah. 15 or 10,000 horsepower. And one of the, two of the compressors were off that day. And so they said, well, it's not really a fair comparison. It's much smaller, and only one of the compressors is, is, is going. The other two were down for maintenance. And so, you know, they, they really felt that, um, that it was not a very good, it didn't answer their questions. And also, and again, this is, as Lori 
told the story to me. She said she got the feeling from the person showing them around, and maybe this is a PR thing that Kinder Morgan could learn from. Um, mm -hmm. She said they didn't say it in these words, but she said the basic message that she got was this is coming and you shouldn't worry your pretty little head about it um, you know that she because, said <laughs> because they're, they're safe or because there's nothing you can do because about it? Because there's nothing you can do about it because the the it's you know we've done this before and it's gonna go there and just don't even buy they were trying to head off objections I think okay but that, that would not be the way to do it the way to do it would be to convince you it's safe and it's not gonna be an issue but that's just gonna rile you up if that's the sense that she got. She, that's, it, that's very it, much the sense she got and you know that's mm -hmm. that's sort of the uh, other, uh, again, looking on YouTube, you can see other gas companies that have wanted to put in compressor stations have public meetings where they have somebody from the mm -hmm. gas pipeline company present. This is what it will look like. They have a bunch of their engineers there. They do a, a forum where the people in the community can ask questions. And in fact, I learned an awful lot from those forums that are on YouTube that you can watch. And, and in Kinder other never did that. But Kinder Morgan has, we've asked them to do that. They, they just they, bought the land, found out that they've got the proper licensing if they want to going through the feds and they just, they can do it. They can do it. I guess, and so. So they feel that they don't have to do the. the and the, the other companies when they did this didn't do it because they had to. They did it because they wanted to try to answer questions for they folks and avoid what Kinder's now dealing with with you. I think they wanted to, yeah, they wanted to try and fit in with the community. Now maybe, maybe that approach <laughs> doesn't work. Maybe Mm -hmm. But, you know, You're right, right. It, it, I, I would rather, I, I'd have a lot more respect for an honest dialogue about it. We might still disagree about the placement of it, but at least answer our questions, you know, so that, and you might com convince some people that it's maybe not going to be that bad. But as I said, everything we've read now, and we're having to do all the homework, we're having to read their filings, makes it look like it is a terrible engineering decision. From my, I mean, I, I look at it from the you're a physics Clearly, professor. I'm a physics professor. Yeah. So I look at it from the technical point of view. I look at it from the, the risk point of view, uh, from a very objective mathematical sense to try and say, you know, what is the risk? What is the... And because it could easily be placed elsewhere, there are many more safer places that it could be put, places that would have much less environmental <coughs> impact. It makes no sense to put it in this in this location. And that is my objection. As I said, I'm not trying to ruin their business or, you know, get rid of natural gas. I just think this is a bad decision. Um, and, you know, if they won't sort of answer you and, mm -hmm. and, no, and answer your question. You want to get those questions. You know, you, so tonight then, it's, as you said, it's the second reading in votes. It's the second and reading. So, uh, you know, we've, we've got, I think we've got a lot of the the, the council folks on board. Mm -hmm. um, but then it'll go through, and then if it passes, if they'll it vote passes, tonight, right? They'll vote tonight, but then there's a third reading in August. I know, but August. that's a rubber stamp, man. And nothing's yeah. going to change okay. between now and then, right? Well, we, Probably we certainly not. hope so. They're, they're getting the council folks and every, um, every legislator we've talked to says, oh, I got visited by two very well-dressed, you know, Kinder Morgan people. They are being lobbied hard. Okay. So, uh, and so is, while you have not been able to meet to really talk to them, there is lobbying going they're on, lobby of course. They're, they're lobbying the, 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 you know, the, the council folks. They're lobbying um, state senators. Did any of them share with you what the gist of their lobby was or how they say, look, we understand their concerns. Here is what it is. The, the, the lobbying all comes around the idea that, you know, first of all, they, they give the impression that this is Tennessee gas. They, and I think uh -huh. what they say is the pipeline brings gas to Tennessee. Well, the pipeline does bring it some gas. It just passes through. But the compressor station yeah. is, is about sending, okay. the, the excess capacity is all sending down for export. Um, they talk about jobs, they talk about, but they talk about them being good stewards of, you know, and having a great safety record. Mm -hmm. And those things are not, I don't think those are, those are not really true. And it, people, I'm sure if you get the Sunday Tennessean um, for the last mm -hmm. five weeks, I think there's mm -hmm. these big full page ads, their color full page ad in the Tennessean in the front section. Uh, they start off being Kinder Morgan, now they've switched to Tennessee Gas Pipeline, but they're both the same company. And it's, you know, it doesn't say anything, it just says we're a great company and, and things like that. They're basically doing a PR with the general public to try and make themselves look good. And those ads, Kind of rub us the wrong way because they're mm -hmm. they're you know the the money that goes for one of those ads uh, could be better spent sort of communicating yeah. the truth to us about what's what's going to be going on. Well, the, the fear might be, and who knows? Uh, since they didn't come on, is that the truth is something you wouldn't like to hear anyway? I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. know. Maybe. You know, but, but I'll say this: you know, if, if something like this does go in, and you know the agencies that allow it, or the lawmakers that do, and then God forbid a disaster happens. 
which is everyone's worst nightmare, then people will look back at this and say, what on earth were you thinking? I don't know. That's why you have to put a lot of thought in these things before you move forward one way or the other. Yep. You know, I mean, that's yep. the way. And listen, I hope people, you know, pay attention and go to this meeting tonight if they're interested in it. A lot of people will be there. Bill, listen, thank you. It's an education, just having you on, just sitting yep. here talking and learning about it, a complex issue. But uh, boy, if you live in that area, I don't blame the way you feel at all. Yeah. And I think it's Davidson County, the whole county, yeah. it's it's good, really going to impact them. That's why we want folks to, to, yeah, this to contact is the beginning our of council. Perhaps. Yep. Yep. Thank so. you, sir, for coming on. Yep. Take a break. Be back with a programming note about tomorrow right after this. Stay with us.